the Bohemian Club, the, as you say, the Bohemian Club, that's where all those rich Republicans go up and stand naked against redwood trees, right? <laughs> I've never been to the Bohemian Club, but you ought to go. It'd be good for you. Get some fresh air. One last question. I read a Washington Times article many years ago where you had a comment about the organization, and then now it's been in the Wall Street Journal, it's been in a lot of different newspapers, and that's the Bohemian Grove. And back in, what was it, 1996 when you joined uh, as a Clinton advisor, they were, the Republicans were criticizing you, oh, what about Bohemian Grove, and then, you counter, uh, and then you countered them by saying, hey, I don't run around in the woods naked. What did that mean? Here is the before-mentioned Washington Times article where he said, I didn't run around naked like they do. I don't, I don't know what I don't know what quote you're referring to. I'm not aware of any quote like that. Uh, listen, uh, uh, I am a, a, a happy member of the Bohemian Grove. I like the, the folks who come there, and uh, it's really inappropriate for me to uh, talk about a uh, uh, the group beyond that. Thank you. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, uh, frankly, that's, uh, that uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Really? That's right. Well, I'm Alex Jones, and I snuck in there in 2000. I'm the guy that blew it wide open and got the video and put on national TV. Well, I disrespect you for that. You do? I do. But there's a lot of big public officials going in there. You don't we deserve to know? You took an I don't know anything about you, and I don't know anything about your film. But if you go in there with an understanding, you violated that understanding by releasing that film, and I don't respect you for that. Really? But you we have public you, officials. I'm sorry. You office. took an understanding when you went in there that you would not do that film. And you did, did you have an understanding when you went in there? No. Did you crash it? Yes. Yeah, and it has no trespassing signs there, too, does it? No, they put them yes. up after. Oh, I'm I sorry. Just walk in. I'm sorry, sir. I've been there before. I know what I want the circumstances are, and I'm sorry you uh, violated the understandings. That was not that was not a gentlemanly thing to do. But what about the ritual? Is the ritual gentlemanly? <laughs> sir, everything. Uh, you, I, I, I don't. I don't owe you this comment. I know. You, 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 you have. You, this is what's called ambush journalism, and I disrespect you for that as well. So thank you, you and goodbye. Have you ever That's none of your damn business. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature. They had exactly the same agenda, and that was for bringing in this new world order. I heard George Bush talking at that time, he was talking to to Bill Clinton, and, and I've since photographically recorded it and, and wrote it verbatim in our book, that when the American people became disillusioned with Republicans leading them into the New World Order, that Bill Clinton as a Democrat was going to be put into the office of president. This was decided in 1984. Actually, I'd heard about it even prior to that, but that, as of 1984, they were already discussing it as an absolute fact. The CIA is carrying out mind control on countless numbers of unwitting American victims. And he even went so far as to say the basic methods that they use in this mind control, hypnosis, drugs, and torture. Three parts of policy that they had uh, adopted there. The second one was to find a way of being able to get total control of people's minds. And that would be done 
by taking hypnotism out of the realm of the occult and introduce it as a new science for the benefit of mankind. reflecting a policy of genocide either against the Tibetan people themselves or against their culture. Once I realized I had met an honest, genuine, high-level Freemason who told me there were 13 levels of Freemason above the 33rd degree, and that these people were God. There was no God, they were God. So I asked them about their plans to kill people, and they said, yes, there are too many people on the planet. We need to get rid of, of several billion, and war doesn't seem to work, so we're going to use disease and starvation. He knew what was happening and he attempted to warn us when he left office. He told us, quite bluntly and in no uncertain terms, to beware of the military-industrial complex. And who is the military-industrial complex? It is the members of the Council on Foreign Relations. And since the inception of the Trilateral Commission, the Trilateral Commission as well. was made up of the Executive Committee of the Council on Foreign Relations. Now, it is extremely significant that you understand that the first six members from the government, along with President Eisenhower, were also members and long-time members of the Council on Foreign Relations. They believed in that organization. They believed in its goals, which was one world government. Number 15, great industrial depression and financial panic, unemployment, hunger, shortage of food. Use this to control the masses or the mobs and use the mob to wipe out all those who dare to stand in the way. Well, I'll tell you right now, every expert I've talked to is talking about food shortage. And it's coming, I'm convinced. Well, what, what were they? Because they, uh, I'd never seen anything like that. and. Uh, and his statement was that if he told me, I would be one of few people in Madison, Georgia, that knew about them. And he says they're, they're uh, disposable coffins. They were stacked, uh, he told me, 15 high. Yeah.
di Cristo, è di Cristo, è di Cristo, è di Cristo, ecco, ecco. You don't realize you don't just have one soul that comes into this body. Mm -hmm. You have a soul, but in order to experience many experiences at one time, you don't just come into one body. It, they said it's like it splinters, mm -hmm. goes into facets and splinters. And when it does that, it is experiencing many lives at the same time. This means all your past lives, your present lives, and future possibilities. These are simultaneous lives. And so at times, we do tap into some of those when I'm doing the sessions. Mm -hmm. But you're not to know about those things because it would be too confusing for you. You had you all the other parts of you, what they were doing and what they were experiencing. You, know, you would go crazy, you couldn't handle it. So they said, you focus on this life right now, what you're doing right here, that's the most important thing for this facet right now. And have you've you've heard information about stargates, I imagine, from your from the people you've talked to. Yes, I know about dimensions and time travel and going back and forth between dimensions. Mm hmm And the portals uh, and the windows. Right. And and you've heard, I imagine, that uh, the secret government. You've heard about the secret government. I've written about that in the Nostradamus books. Mm -hmm. He called it the cabal, the okay. government behind the government. And that they are doing, um, that they are using the stargates and going um, basically out into the solar system. Yes, and they're also doing time travel. They're doing a lot of that. I don't like to be involved with that. Mm -hmm. Because I've had some problems with that. Oh, really? The government, and I'd rather not get over into that, but yes, okay. it's very real. Okay. So that's what they said, don't buy into it. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to what they're saying. Don't. They're, they are trying to create fear. Sure. They're trying to get rid of the population because they can control you as long as it's a certain number, but it's gotten so big they can't control the people anymore. The idea is to get rid of the population and tone it down. And a lot of that is done with what they're doing now. The wars and the food and the, definitely the so crazy swine flu thing. Mm -hmm. Even the doctors are told we do not take those shots under any circumstances because you don't know what's in them. But those people are creating fear. When you create fear, you create a great deal of karma. Mm -hmm. And they create a great deal of karma with what they're doing, so they are definitely not going to go. Okay. So they're not going to be happy about the whole thing. From the dawn of time we came, moving silently down through the centuries, living many secret lives, struggling to reach the time of the gathering, when the few who remain will bat to the last. No one has ever known we were among you. Until now. But who were these creatures? These creatures were the rebels that were escaping, the angel, the rebel angels that were escaping from God, you know. <coughs> what we have here <coughs> in this present situation is that we think they are in reality interbreeds between mankind and rebels. And this is the most, the biggest disease for that we can get.